this right here, this is fulfilling Matthew 24, 14, you know. This is where it's at. Like, I've never experienced something so powerful in my life, ever, ever. Like, this is, this is fully where it's at, man. The more I seek you, the more I find you. The more I find you The more I love you I wanna sit at your feet Drink from the cup in your hand Lay back against you and breathe Feel your heartbeat This love is so deep say that God is truly moving in this place it's just such an experience I didn't know what to expect I got here we prayed and I felt the Holy Spirit like never ever before and all I wanted to do was just tell people what Jesus has done for my life you know and just share what he's done for me in my life and how he's been able to keep me you know from certain temptations that used to plague my life 
I've just been talking to some guys who were just on, on, on their way to a party, you know, they were going to do whatever they were going to do, and you know, they were willing to just listen and just talk to me about what we was, um, about what's it called, my personal testimony. I talked to them about how God helped me through certain situations in my life and how He's helped me through, you know, and it's just beautiful to see the way people are just willing to hear the Word of God. I believe Matthew 24 14 is starting to take place. This gospel will be spread in all the world as a witness unto all nations, and then the end of time shall come. I believe that every single man, woman, boy, and girl is going to hear this word, but not only hear this word, but get a chance to understand that God loves them. They have a decision to make whether to follow God or follow Satan. Amen. And I think it's, it, 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 it's going really well. You know, if we could get more people to go out and actually uh, meet uh, everyone who's passing around because they're willing to stop and listen to the Jesus that we share. So it's, it's really inspiring and I, I feel really happy. <laughs> if there is no answer to the street of London, then I guarantee you that this world has to end another way. But Jesus says that I am the answer, so this world is not just going to end like that. This world is not just going to end by gun crime and knife crime. But Jesus Christ said that I sent my son to die so that you can live. Jesus said that I sent my son to planet earth so that I can come and save you. I came to save you when nobody else was there for you, when nobody else was loving you. Jesus said, I came to die for you. So as you see what we're doing outside here, I want you, if you're looking with your eyes, if you can hear us, come and get a book. Come and pray with us. Come and speak to us because we only want to give Jesus Christ so if you are walking by and you are prayer then come and we will pray with you and it's great to see so many people um, spread the word of Jesus I think it's going well so far and I think the song is really like encouraging us and keeping us going so yeah we feel good yeah. And what are you doing today? I'm giving out books so, so then, so then uh, we can, we, we can, um, we can, we can um, encourage people to go to heaven. And are you enjoying it? Yeah. Will you do it again? I hope I will next time. Next time. time is wrapping up. Time is wrapping up, we're running out of time. You might not listen to these words, but I'm telling you, you will have a chance to accept Jesus Christ today. You will have a chance to understand that we need a saviour and the saviour was provided. You need to hear today that there's something that's not quite right but inside us, but there was a man that came and died for our sins. And he gave us the choice. Why have we got young people here on the streets that are not in the clubs? Why do we have young people here on the streets that refuse to get involved in sexual sin? Why is it we have young people here today that are not going to follow the world's morals? Why are they here today? They're here because of a man. They're here because of power. They're here because of heavenly power. They're here because God chose all of us, not just us in our red, but you also. God came and God looked at us and he's seen that there was a nation that was dying. He's seen that we needed help. He's seen that we were going to die, that we were going to suffer, that the world was going to treat us like rubbish. And he said, I'm not going to let that happen to my people. So he sent his son to die for us. Basically, what happened today was I got knocked over by a lorry. And the truth of the matter was, I didn't want to come today because I felt spiritually knocked over and physically. But today, something just happened as I'm giving out some books. What was happening, I was walking around and a guy came up to me and asked me, what are we doing here? So I explained to him what we're doing. And he said to me, where can I pray? And I said, we could pray right now. And he goes, um, I don't want to pray right now, but what I want to do is I want to come to your church tomorrow. So what I said was, was I'll pick you up tomorrow anytime you want, as long as it's before one o'clock. So he said, all right, can you pick me up at 12? So I said, yeah, no problem, where do you want to meet? He said, here in Stratford. So I said to him, 
Brother, I will pick you up. I won't let you down through Jesus Christ that I rise tomorrow. And I pray that as we, as you leave this place, that you may read any track that you've been given now. And that tomorrow when you see me, that you will meet your God and Saviour at church tomorrow. Um, yeah, I think it's been like a really total success. Like, um, like you can definitely tell the Spirit of God's actually in this. Like, at first, before I came, I was thinking, okay, it should be like one of those, you know, in gathering where you should give out books, but I can actually feel God's presence in this. And it's my first time, but I'm definitely coming again. Like, you can see people giving their testimonies, telling them how they've came, like where they've been before. Some people are glad to accept it, but some people not, but we know God's gonna, you know, touch them one day. Maybe not today, but whenever. Yeah, so today's been total success. Yeah, I just think this experience is just good, not just for us, but for other people, because they can get a chance to obviously, you know, just take these books and, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't take much, you know, just, you know, even just two minutes of their time can even change their life. It's really actually touched my heart, because God, you know, he's called me, and he's called all these people just to, you know, to talk, just to talk for just for a few minutes, just to talk to people about him and how he's impressed upon our lives. I'm just really happy about what he's done and it just made me um, love him more. It's deep in my love for him and it's also made me realise that when I'm in school, I've got so many opportunities to witness to people and obviously I haven't really been taking them. So now it's, it's the time because time's running out. So I just, I'm just thank God for really giving me more strength and giving me more um, love for him. So, yeah. I said Lucifer enslaved you to sin. He tainted your kin by staining you within. I, Jesus, was written on your heart, but now it's parading with him. Flamboyantly, perversely, degraded by gin. But I made a promise, both to you and to he. I placed enmity between you and the one whom deceived, that he would crush your head and you would bruise your heel prophecies of a Christ King that I allowed to be killed. So basically, I, Jesus, I laid it on the line. I set prophecies on time to claim you back as mine. Incarnation did not fix the situation. But blessed is the man that hangeth upon the tree, or well, cursed is the man that hangeth upon the tree. And it became my plan for that cursed man to be me. And if it wasn't so, never could you be freed from your transgressions and your iniquity. I, Jesus, am wisdom. I, Jesus, am power. And I, Jesus, will answer in the hour. When you place your trust in me, expect my words to make you free. So, it's been amazing. We came out here to Stratford and to be honest, we've done this a couple of times before but we didn't really know what to expect. But it's been unbelievable. I mean, we, we had like, the books laid out on the table and I see people that, you know, you wouldn't have thought would stop and, and listen to anything, you know, religious. They look at it just about their business. And I saw one woman, she went over, picked up one of the free copies of Steps to Christ and she just sat down and for the next 20 minutes she sat on the step and literally just read the book Steps to Christ. And I've never seen that before. And, and another thing, my brother Dean, he was just preaching and uh, one guy started slowing down and following him and the guy literally, as Dean was taking a step forward, the guy followed his movements and he was just standing there watching him for a few minutes. Just when he was getting ready to move on, um, you know, he'd, he'd heard Dean for about two minutes, he was getting ready to move on and uh, me and another girl like stopped him and just said, how you doing, it's alright, I can pray with you. And he was a bit surprised, but he said, okay, you can pray. Um, and he still seemed a bit surprised, so, uh, so we said, is there anything particular you want us to pray for? I don't know if you could not think of anything. He just said, um, world peace. And so we prayed and we literally just, you know, brought down what it meant, like the state of the world's in and, you know, what peace would really mean. And, and literally when we finished the prayer, like the look in his eyes, you know, you could tell you he'd never really been prayed for like that before. And he was so happy, he was so grateful. So, you know, anyone that's not come out yet, you need to come out because you, you can't really get the sense of what this is unless you come out. But it's been... Well, basically, I've just been speaking to a young man and something, to be honest, inspired me to um, speak to him. He seemed very intrigued in terms of what was going on and he seemed very engaged in terms of, you know, the young people singing. So I approached him, I gave him a book and I asked him, you know, if he's a Christian, if he believes in Christ. And he said, yes, in fact, I've just been um, baptised. Well, obviously, you know, that really warmed my heart. So I gave him a book called Steps to Christ and he 
took the book very gladly and you know he said that he wants to get to know God more and he wants to um, he wants to study the Bible more and get to um, to know his area of ministry so with that I was talking to him about you know um, the importance of going on a journey with Christ and um, he understood that but you know throughout the conversation whilst I was speaking to him he said you know something I think I actually know one of the guys that's in the group with you and I said really and he said yes um, it's the guy with the blue jumper so I said you mean um, Andrew and he he said, yeah, I think it, it is Andrew. So with that, I actually escorted him over to Andrew and, um, you know, Andrew will continue from there. Now, just imagine my dear sister, my co-laborer, brings over this guy. And, you know, you always hear us saying it. We used to be doing this on the street. We used to be, you know, stabbing people, beating up people, robbing people. But nobody takes it seriously. And I always said that my past life, I know for a fact, yeah, that it, it had gone so far that even though I've come from my past life, that some things will meet up with me afterwards. Now, the guy that she escorted to me, the guy that she escorted to me, basically, you know, he caught my eye. And I looked at him and I said, wait a minute, I know this face, I know this guy. But I said, where do I know him from? And he took my hand and I kind of stepped back. And the question is this, where was the last time his eyes caught my eyes? That's the question. The last time I saw him was, he was in a group of guys. I was in a group of guys and we were in war fighting. I was beating up people from his group and he was, you know, just standing there. And I remember watching him and then all of his guys were, you know, they were trying to fight my guys. And then I remember a voice said in my head, like it's clean. Andrew, you know that you shouldn't be doing this. And then he came over to me right here and said, you, like, you're working for God. And I said to myself, literally, this guy standing right here, if it was, I think it was four years ago, me and him was in, you know, war. His team and my team, they weren't friends. But then we split up, I hadn't seen him. But today, the Holy Spirit brought him back and I'm just making it plain this is what we're speaking about so for all those that are trying to say that maybe Christ ain't the answer maybe the role of righteousness Jesus Christ the righteous the son of God Jesus Christ people are saying no no he's not the answer okay then prove this to me how did my life change from unrighteousness to un you know to righteousness what changed my life and the simple question is this we're not trying to woo nobody with no Bible facts we're trying to woo them with the love of Jesus Christ. The love of Jesus reunited my dear brother and me. We used to be enemies, but now we're friends. God, if you're real, if you are really real, God, show yourself to me. Because I've heard about you all my life. I've heard about Jesus Christ. I've heard about angels. I've heard about heaven. I've heard about the devil. But in God, right now, show me something that I've never seen before. Reveal yourself to me now, otherwise I'm leaving. And then God, by his grace, he showed me that he loved me. He showed me that while I was yet a sinner, he loved me and he died for me. The Bible says, but God commended his love towards us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ called me and Christ said this, son, I need you to work for me in a dying world. You might not think that you're dying, you might think that you're okay, you're probably thinking, hey Solomon, stop talking. We've heard guys speak about Christ before. We've heard guys speak about Christ before, but it hasn't done nothing. But I'm letting you know today that there's a group of young people, a group of young people who have sincerely given their lives to Christ. And I'm breaking it down. If Rick Ross was here today, if Beyonce was here today, if Lady Gaga was here today, everybody would be listening. But because we're talking about Jesus Christ, nobody's listening. But I couldn't care less. I'm still going to speak for Jesus until my lungs fail me. Uh, I think it was really good and I'm really happy because we were telling people about Jesus and everybody was doing their bit. How much stuff did you give out today? I gave out about, I think I gave out about 200. Oh, three, four. Well, we have been here tonight, well, since today, and I think we've given over the 5,000 pieces of it to the like, literally non-stop. The hours that we've been here, we've just been putting blow tracks in them, cards, and we've been sending out the literature.
everybody, people are coming back now and just giving out glow tracks. It's been an awesome experience, like, I'm being serious. We thought that we'd finished the literature about an hour and a half ago, and then randomly we'll find another box and we'll keep giving it out. The testimonies of people coming and just seeing the literature, this is the stuff, this is the stuff that will get people. It says it's the right hand of the gospel, and to put something in somebody's hand, it's free, it's just, I can't compare. I've had an awesome time, and all I've been doing is stacking props. And the singing, hearing the preaching, it's just been a fantastic experience. So if ever you think that maybe going out to Jupiter Sing isn't for you, all you have to do is, you know, you've got hands, just hand out a book. It's simple. You don't know what you're going to do to change somebody's life. And even if it sits on their shelf, someday they'll pick it up and they'll read it. It's been an awesome night. Come out next time. I'm telling you, I've been there. I've been there in my room crying, knowing that there's no one there for me. I've been there on the road, robbing people, doing foolishness. I've been there having sex, doing my dirt, bringing people down, doing dirt with me. But when I'm down, I know that God is there, will for me regardless. I'm telling you, and I will tell you, hands down, I put my life on it, that God is always going to be there for you. I'm telling you, this day and age is going to end real soon. I'm telling you, Satan is going to come, like I was telling you, it's going to be like a thief in the night. He will come and get you from left, right and centre. And I'm telling you, we're seeing people die. We saw the rights and we saw so much madness happening in your own town, in your own city, all around you. We're seeing so much madness. We're seeing young people that we're seeing brothers killing brothers. We're seeing girls just making their own, own. They're making, seeing brothers making girls just built. I'm telling you that this day and age is so dirty, it's getting so dark. And I'm telling all of you, it is only going to get worse. I'll be honest, man. Today, it's been powerful. Like, I didn't want to come here in the beginning. The enemy said to me, today, Stratford's too far for you. And the testimony that I'm here today, that's the testimony that I'm here right now. In the beginning, we all prayed. And then, I didn't really feel the spirit at the time. And then we prayed again. I prayed with Florence and Craig. And when we prayed, I knew the spirit was in the mist. I said, God, put words in my mouth. We went to, we, we, we had two young lads here. And literally, we said to them, would you like to take a book? In the beginning, they didn't want to take the book. Then, the words that came out of our mouths was not from us. It was from the spirit. And that's what I'm saying. We said to them, would you like to pray with us? People who are not even Christians, they're agreeing to pray with us. There's too many testimonies today. Okay, um, today has been a wonderful experience. Um, I was just saying to someone that I was speaking in tongues today. Well, not really, but because there was a guy that I spoke to. He was actually Spanish. And I don't really speak much Spanish at all. Um, and I literally spoke to him for like 30 minutes. We communicated. We understood each other to an extent. It was such a wonderful experience. We also prayed for a guy who was sick. Um, he was telling me how he believes in God and how he's, you know, how he prays every morning. Uh, he reads the scripture and then uh, and then he said, "What are they doing over there?" Um, and they were praying, like you know, you know, around each other and praying. And it was so interesting. He was like, "Can you pray for me?" Uh, like that. And I went over to Chantel and we prayed for him. And as we were praying, he lifted his hand up to, to Chantel, you know, and then afterwards he said, thank you, that really touched my heart. It made my heart so warm. So we just praise God. This has been such a wonderful experience. Um, we've talked to quite a lot of people. We've prayed to for people. And I'm so thankful that I got to come. But I'm not here to tell you that. I'm not here to scare you into believing in God.
Because if he can save and if he loves someone like me, then he can love somebody like you. Jesus is real. Yes, he's real to me. And he's coming back again because he loves you. And he wants to take you to somewhere where there's peace, where there's happiness, where there's love, where there's no more dying, where there's no more death, where there's no more pain, no more tears. He's coming back to you because he loves you. And he's coming back because he cares. And it doesn't matter what you've done, whether you've stolen, whether you've murdered, whether you've lied, whether you've cheated, whatever you've done, it doesn't matter because God still loves you. He says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. That means I'm going to love you forever. Forever and ever. He loves you. Accept Jesus Christ. Just believe. Believe in him and he will save you. Believe in Jesus. Believe in him. It's not God, but it's the Holy Spirit dwelling inside you that's speaking to your heart. God is in heaven, watching over you, raining down blessings because he loves you. And we don't deserve it. But guess what? He got it anyway. He got it anyway. Jesus loves you. It's been good. It's yeah. really encouraging. It's been a good experience. Um, each uh, the each different witnessing experience is really different. Can I get um, and you get the Holy Spirit uses you in different ways. So we've learned a lot today. I think. Yeah, it's encouraging when you go to give people things and actually take it, and they're willing to listen yeah. to what you say. Because you come with all your assumptions. No one's really going to listen to what you want to say. They're not one that's going to take it. But then when they do, it's uplifting, and they want to hear what you've got to say. They want to know about Jesus, yeah. like Roy said there was this Muslim lady with her daughter that was listening to us sing and she said that she's never seen young people so on fire for Jesus and preaching the word that she's really interested she might even convert to Christianity so I was just like thank you Lord you are working the Holy Spirit was really with us it was a really good day the Holy Spirit works in ways that you cannot imagine so and the Holy Spirit does go and he softens people's hearts mm. for us to really go and speak to them yeah. It's been really, really good. Um, it's been very spiritual. I've had a lot of people come up and speak to me. Um, a lot of people ask questions. Um, a few debates, people questioning what I've been. But Jesus came to me with me today and he stuck me through it. And he helped me what to say. Normally I don't come up to that kind of situation. And I was kind of scared that someone would come up to me and ask me a question. But um, I was able through him, I was able to answer them correctly. So, um, yeah, it's been really spiritual and I'm very blessed. So thank you. Excuse me. Can you just listen to me for one second? I ask one second of your time and that's it. Let me tell you a story about my life. I'm supposed to be dead, but God saved me. John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's it. You know, I'm doing, I was doing everything that all of you that were doing. I was raving, I was drinking, I was doing drugs, I was doing everything. I've only found Christ six months ago and that's it. Christ has come to me and showed me what he's really about. Because I can tell you now, I was living the world. I was living the life. And it broke me apart. The devil got hold of me and he took me. But today, I am standing here today because God loves me. To believe in him and to fight against the one that is against God. It's, it's Satan. Yes. yes, we have to support him, to believe him, and to stand on his side, to go on the right way, Amen. to go on the right way together. It's not, it's not something that happens just the way like this. I came from Germany here in London to have holidays to celebrate my 18th birthday. It's not, it's not one day like everybody, everyone else. It's a special day for me and I am here now because God wanted this to happen. Amen. Yeah. The point is that we together have to go on the right way to stand on God's side when the, when the Satan wants to keep us. I don't speak really good English. It's okay. But I just wanted to say thank you for everybody that prayed for me, for my family, and I hope 
God will help everybody to, to trust in Him and to believe in Him. I just want to say a big thank you to everyone that's come out. You know, God has done something for you. For some of you, He's reaffirmed your faith. For some of you, he's given you that confidence to keep you. Look at how we open the Sabbath. Now, next month, we're going to be in Wood Green. So you can tell your friends, tell your friends in North London, but we're going to be up there. But know, guys, that this is going to happen every single month. And this is power that will keep you, okay? So let's pray. Father in heaven, everybody here is here because we are excited to preach for you. We have learned that it's not about knowledge, it's about faith in Jesus. Do we believe we have faith to share what we believe in? Now, because we believe we have faith, we have said tonight, Lord, that I will preach for Jesus. We've made it personal. Forget preaching place, it's not about the ministry. It's about us taking a personal stance and standing up for what we believe in. There is no other God who can be served but our God, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And we are saying it plain, we're saying it straight tonight, that everyone here, believe that you have power now. Believe that as you go forward, God has given you the strength to keep you from falling. Believe that you've shared something with somebody else that will give them the power to come out of the sinful state that they're in. Many of you don't understand, but the literature that you've handed out tonight will do amazing things in a month's time, in two months' time, in six months' time, in a year's time. So that's why we give out the literature because we don't know it can bring somebody to true repentance and make them know about Jesus Christ. So don't worry about numbers coming into church. Just get Jesus into their hands. Amen. Amen. Brothers, and, brothers and sisters, let us know tonight that God has done an amazing work. When do you see young people go on the street and say, I will preach for Jesus? When do you see that? Now I say this, said this last time, I'll say it again. Many of you have friends Many of you have family who do not know about what happened tonight. Many of you have friends and family who you didn't tell about tonight. Many of you have friends and family who you're not speaking to about Jesus. I know because I don't. And if you do, speak harder to them. Speak more to them because Jesus Christ is coming again. And if we believe that, then tell them Jesus Christ is coming again and tell them that he can save them from their sins and believe by faith because tonight you have seen people Sincerely, want Bible, I saw people want Bible studies and when you look at them, if they come into church, the church needs to accept these people, man, brethren. Tonight has been amazing. And let us know by faith that we have more power than ever before. In Jesus' name, let us all say, Amen. Amen. Give me Jesus, you can have all How many people is the station? So many people are coming through here and you just... Absolutely powerful. I can't say nothing more than that. I'm happy to be here. Next one, I'm there. Next one after that, I'm there. One after that, I'm there. <laughs> it's powerful, man. Get here next time. Man. Next time. But give me Jesus.